Hello everybody, Fernando Perez here, the War Music Guitars guy. Today I'm going to show you how to play a, a piece called Nan Hileli Keli Lori, which means something like a, 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 a lullaby for, for little Lily. It's actually uh, an original lullaby I wrote for my, for my daughter. Um, it is based on Raga Herbi. But first of all, let's just listen to the whole piece, yeah? So let's start with the different parts of this lullaby, okay? We are on Raga Bherbi, okay? Um, remember Raga Bherbi, if you're a Western musician, the group of notes is very similar to what we call a Phrygian mode. Has nothing to do with it, but just almost the same notes, all right? So just to give you an idea, but remember always when you learn Indian music, never relate it to Western music because it has nothing to do with it and you will get confused and get things wrong, even though when things might look very similar. So on this raga, we have uh, several notes, sa, komal re, komal ga, ma, pa, komal dha. A comma ni and sa, which is something like in, in the key of C, C, D flat, um, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, higher C. And sometimes we use a little uh, color using a, a natural D, okay, which would be a sudha re on Indian, on the, on the Hindi notes, okay, if you go by those. All right, and that's just a little color, okay? But Ragab Herbi, um, originally, it doesn't really have that note, but sometimes we use it, okay? So, um, let's start with the first part of the melody, okay? It's kind of like style, antar style, which is like first part, second part, and, and first part, again, ABA. In reality, we're doing AABA. Okay, for Western musicians to understand the structure of this song. Okay, so first of all, guitar tuning is my usual here. C, G, C, G, C, and one more C on the first string. First and second string are C, okay? So from six to first, C, G, C, G, C, C. The rhythm 
of this, the tal or rhythm used on, on this melody is what we call dadra tal, okay? Dadina datina, dadina datina, dadina datina, dadina datina. One, two, three, four, five, six. I just started setting the the tempo and 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 the type of rhythm. For Western musicians, you can you may compare it to a six eight or a six four. Okay, but be careful because when we study Indian rhythms, tal. Okay, we have other things not just the count of six, you know, the sound, which in this case is on the first beat and the Hali on the fourth beat, okay? So, in this case, we're gonna start with the first melody. Start right here on, on your G, or you're on the first string. I'm gonna play the melody very simple without the accompaniment of the other strings. Remember, the rest of the strings are kind of like drum strings and, are, and you kind of only add them in between when you have gaps and you try to kind of keep the, the feel of the rhythm, okay? So you don't have to do it exactly like I'm doing it on my performance. What you need to follow mainly is the melody. The rest, the fill up, you know, when things like this, it's something you're gonna do at your own taste and just always making sure you keep that that dadra feel, you know, that, that rhythm feel. So we have... Okay, we're going to G from F and then to A flat. So it's F, A flat, G, F flat, A, A flat. So one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, and then we have this phrase. So it will be F, G, F, E flat, F, E flat. Listen very well, you know how I'm doing this. I'm plucking the first note, then the second note, and the rest I'm sliding it. So get the feel with the tempo because it's super important. Always try to listen a lot to the song if you are not familiar with it already, okay? And once you learn it, try to play a lot along with me so you can get the, the, the right drive on the notes, you know? So one, two, three, one, two, three. Okay. And then we go back for the melody one more time and we come from this ramp. So it's C, E flat from A, F, F from G, and then G. And then we'll repeat exactly the same, but we're gonna make a little variation. Instead of going, okay, I do. This is the same, but here is a variation. So it's F, B flat, A flat, G, F flat. Okay, make sure you pass through every single note and you can hear it clear, okay? It's not like, it's not like a slide with no ending, okay? You have to really mark what the notes that you're passing through. So you have to really take uh, like a less than a millisecond on every note when you have a a fast phrase like this, you know, to make sure you can hear the notes, okay, and not just a, a, a glissando or a slide that passes through everything but but shows no notes, yeah, so. Okay, so. And then we finish, instead of finishing like the first time with this phrase, we're gonna finish with this phrase. So it's E flat, a quick um, passing through F, G, and then E flat, F, E flat. Again, be very careful with these notes, with these phrases like that, when, especially when you break it down and you play it slow, because you can lose the drive or the intention of the, of the phrase. So make sure after you learn it slow, listen to it on the real speed one more time. Make sure you match the intention of, of that phrase. 
So if I play the first line, which is repeated twice with a variation on the second one, it will be one, one, two, three, one, two, three, da dina, da dina. And now we continue. Here's when we show in that that natural D, which is not totally from the heavy. Harry. Okay, E flat D F D E flat D This is a phrase E flat D F D E flat D E flat D E So Okay, and then we continue one more time. Okay, to, to G, and then E flat, D flat, C, D flat, C. And here with this uh, comal re or, or D flat, we really mark the Herbie character, yeah? Okay, so the second part will be. One, two, three, one, two, three, da dina, da dina. Twice. Okay, so now we have a little tal here. I'm just brushing all the strings at the beginning. I was only playing the first four strings and now I just open up the sound, you know? So you can hear the bass. And I'm doing the da 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 And we'll do again the same melody. So far, same thing. Same thing, but watch it now. Okay, when we do this phrase, we have a very subtle variation here. Instead of doing this, we're gonna do. Here comes the change. So it will be F, E flat, D, natural D, E flat. So it will be. Okay, and then we have another variation at the end of this phrase, the second time around. C, E flat, D, F, E flat, D, E flat. Everything with one strike of the slide. And we close the same way as we did before. So from this part. And that's it, that, that's just the style, the first part of this melody, okay? Which is repeated twice. And like I said, the only difference is like that subtle differences, a uh, difference or, or variation on the ornaments of the melody at the very end, okay? Now, this is something very Indian, okay? When you play, it's not that I will always play it like this. Every time I play it, uh, I'm gonna make subtle variations, especially on the ornaments, okay? And then I can even change some phrases a little bit, yeah? But the ornaments, the art of playing Indian music most of the time is in uh, knowing how many different ways you can approach one note, okay? And you have to spice up that note, okay? And, uh, and, and put ornaments and connect the notes. That's the art of it. So this is like a fixed version, but know that in real life, every time around, we can make a lot of subtle variations on the ornaments and the melody, all right? That will be the first part, okay? The, on, on the first repetition, I said, I kept my accompaniment on my drum strings on the, uh, limited to the fourth strings. And on the second time around, I open 
to the sixth and the fifth string to create a like a bigger effect, not that much louder, but bigger, you know, because of, of the low bass here. And then when I play the second time the melody, I hit more of that sixth and fifth string in order to make the whole thing sound fatter, yeah, or, or, or fuller. And now we go to this to the antar, to the second part, or the B part, if you want to call it like that, okay? Start with this. So it would be B flat to A flat, B flat to C, A flat, B flat, C. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. So one slide here, another here, and one full here. So B flat, D flat, C flat, D flat. And now C, E, E flat, D flat, C, B flat, A flat. Here we go. Okay, I'm just going from E flat all the way down to G and then come back. And the second time I repeat the same, but I make this variation. So it will be B flat and then E flat, D flat, C, D flat. And I finish going down, but not all the way to G just to B flat, okay? E flat, D flat, C, B flat, C. And then I repeat this line again. And then I, here, here I make a variation. So the phrase is we go E flat, F, excuse me, E flat, D flat, C, B flat, and then D flat, C, B flat, A flat. And then we go up from G, all the way to D flat, skipping C, to finish on C. So we. And I'm doing playing with the right hand thumb index, just like this. Okay, I could do index middle, but it doesn't sound the same because of the way that the thumb adds, you know? And this is gonna remind us a lot of the kind of playing and some phrases that we hear a lot on the Indian sarot, okay? If you know the Indian instrument. So it's okay. We continue repeating the same and we finish. And I just cut it. Sometimes I just cut it dead like this. Sometimes I just let it ring. And now we go, we are on the second part of the of the Antara, okay? Which is just coming down, back down to the lower octave. Okay, on A flat from G. And then this phrase which you learn on the first part. So I recommend you to really learn the first part well and then go to the second because a lot of things are gonna be repeated or similar and it's gonna be easier to learn the whole piece if you focus bit by bit and don't try to take the whole melody at once, okay? A flat from G. And then, this we saw it too on the first part. We come down, E flat, F, G, A flat. Same phrase as at the beginning on the first part of the song. And then, remember this one? We did it on the variation on the first part. C, E, D, F, E flat, D, E flat, D flat, G. And sometimes we make this variation of which is B flat, E flat, we're going to the third string, E flat, 
I mean B flat to E flat, D flat, C, and then E flat, D flat, C. Okay? Okay, and this ending you're gonna hear it too in other parts of the song and you can actually use it in when you make your variations, okay? So right after here, we'll do a little bit of tal again. Okay, and then we will go back to the style, the first part. Okay, the first part you already know it, so that's all we do, we just repeat it. And after that, we're not doing it this time, but we will have like an alap, more like a chod style, you know, keeping the rhythm and, and improvising over the raga, but we're gonna work on that in a, in a different video. So remember, um, if you're playing this way, not the flat way, or you could do the same melody on a lap style guitar, either a Weissenborn, a lap style guitar, an acoustic, flat, or even an Indian guitar, of course, you know. <laughs> we also have that. But if you're doing it this way, remember that one of the tricks here is being very gentle with the slides so you don't make noises on the frets, you know, and you can do all those fast slides easier, okay? Um, I suggest you to check some other of my videos on the YouTube channel or on my website uh, where you're gonna see different uh, tips and advice about how to play Indian music on the standard acoustic guitar with the slide or on the lap style. And there you see details like, you know, string gauge and things like that, you know. So you have a nice setup where you can play comfortably Indian music as well as any other style, okay? It, it doesn't mean that you have to do put some special strings that will only allow you to play, you know, Indian music with the slide and then you cannot use the guitar for other styles, no. Remember, that's not my approach. It's, it, my approach is always having just one guitar and being able to play everything with that one. Okay, same string gauge, same stuff, all right? So just check the video. I think it would be helpful if you haven't checked it already. And well, um, I hope you like all this and you understood everything. You know I'm always open to receive your comments or emails through my website form, a contact form and I'll be glad to help you out and reply, you know, if you have any questions when you're working on this. All right, bye now.